Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and I want to give you a follow along for the little guys, which is the feet and the ankles. So if you'll join me on the floor, I want you to sit like this, as I have already started. So right now, just sitting in this position, you're starting to work on your plantar flexion. So it's a very important thing to be able to sit like this. If you can't comfortably sit like this, grab yourself a pillow, put it underneath you so that you're able to sit in that, then you're going to be able to enjoy actually sitting in this position. So while we're just stretching here, we'll go over some of the benefits for actually having strong feet. It's such an important thing, especially if you enjoy lifting or running, that your feet are strong enough to be able to absorb impact well, but also to be able to give you a stable platform to be able to lift from. If you have strong feet, you'll have healthier hips. It's just the way things work. Your feet are your foundation, so it's really important that you look after them. I don't necessarily like talking about feet that much, but there is so many benefits to doing these exercises that you should be doing them regularly, and you'll find that you just accidentally run into less problems, no pun intended. So let's get ourselves started. So after you stretch, the top's out, lean yourself back a little bit, put a bit more pressure into it. You can lift the knees up and just sort of march yourself while you're there and just get that nice stretch on. So just move yourself around, have a wiggle, move your upper body, make circles and just get used to this position. Make it a position you can actually start to rest in. From there, we're then going to stand ourselves up nice and slowly. If you've been sitting for a while in a specific stretch, you may want to just take your time whenever you get up out of something. From there, we're just going to do some rolls. So we're going to chill the ankles out by just rolling around in both directions. Not too much thought going into this, you're just looking to get a bit of movement going because you've been sitting in one position for a while. Just five circles clockwise, four, five, and then five circles anti-clockwise, five, and then the other side clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, and then back, one, two, three, four, five. From there, what you're gonna do is start to work on the sides like this. So you're gonna lean, into this leg more, and you're gonna turn this foot so it's on the side, until you feel almost a bit of pressure coming up into your knee, okay? So these are positions you're not gonna find yourself deliberately going into, but they do happen, especially if you are playing sport and you need to change direction quickly, you may need to turn fast, and your knees are not gonna end up in perfect positions that you're able to stop and turn around like this if you're trying to be fast about trying to catch anyone or anything like that. So it's really important that you get used to these positions so that the first time that you're ever in them isn't just while you're playing. And then the other side, so you're going on the inside, roll the foot. These are good to do in your bare feet as well, so basically mush your feet into something hard. Don't be nice about it. You know, the first time you ever do them, you could maybe do them on the carpet or something like that, but you want to have the tolerance that you could do them on a hard floor like I'm doing now. So just swap from side to side, and you're just putting that bit of pressure on the side of the foot and the ankle. And over time, you can start to lean a bit more. You can even start to do both sides at the same time over time. Don't do that today. So just lean in and just keep swapping from side to side. And swap. And swap. And then we're gonna go for the outside of the foot. So the ridge, you're just gonna bring, so your weight is fairly in the middle. You go to the side, and one foot slightly in front of the other one, and then you just put a little bit of weight. If you need something to hold on to, do this beside a wall, and just use that to gauge the pressure. But again, over time, you're gonna be able to tolerate a lot more as you do this, and you can just rock in. So I'm on the right foot now, so I can rock myself forwards and backwards, make little circles, side to side. Hold that position. Then from there, other side. Let's get that bit of pressure on. Lean into it that little bit. 
and then just rock yourself around. Forwards and back, side to side. Lovely. And then back to the first side again. So weight in the center, lean on the outside of the foot, and just put that wee bit of pressure on. You can sort of rock in and out of it, just don't do a mad, quick jerk motion. And again, practicing these movements, it could mean the difference if you were ever to roll your ankle, that maybe you just get a little bit of a sprain rather than a full on bad injury come of it. So you're sort of prepping yourself for potentially bad positions. But there are no bad positions, there's just all positions, but some you're gonna be a lot stronger in than others. So obviously with your feet flat, on the ground, you're gonna be a lot stronger, you're gonna have more movement there than when you've just went to the outer limits of the ankle. So, after that, we're then going to do a few more rolls, just because we spent some time stretching in different positions. These are all progressive, so keep swapping side to side with your rolls. Five one way, five the other way. So they're all progressive, and over time, you will build up more and more tolerance with them and it's just almost like you're bulletproofing your joints. You'll never be fully 100% bulletproof, but you can get pretty close. Okay, so after this, we're now going to start to stretch the backs, the calves, and the Achilles. So all you need is a wall, and what you're gonna do is get yourself into a nice staggered position. So one leg in front of the other one, so I'm going left leg in front, right leg behind. And what I'm going to do here is bend my knee and then push into the wall, and then try and get my heel down to the ground behind me. And I'm gonna hold that for 30 seconds. And then while I'm there and holding, I can bend the knee ever slightly and push back down. Imagine you're trying to push the wall away, you can lean the torso forward. This is a really nice one to spend time in. And rock yourself from side to side. Bend the knee a little, put the heel back down, try and drop the torso more, and just get that stretch in the back of the ankle and the calf. And change the other side, so left foot back, right foot in front, same idea, push into the wall, bend the knee, push back. Rock yourself from side to side. Bend the knee, push it down. Drop the torso. Really nice one to spend time and increase your dorsiflexion, which is what everyone seems to be after these days. Nice and slowly, bring yourself up out of it. Then we're gonna go through a toe stretch. So you're just gonna use your wall. You're gonna use your right foot. Put your toes on and just push into the wall. So you're actually trying to stretch out the toes and you can bend the knee, straighten the leg, bring yourself closer to the wall. You can hold that for 30 seconds. Nice and relaxed. Rock yourself side to side, back and forth. Make a little circle. Give the wall a hug. It's really important to stretch out your toes. And then just change sides nice and slowly. Other foot on. Get yourself nice and close to the wall. Rock back and forward. Side to side. Bend the knee, straighten the knee. Bring yourself closer to the wall again. All of these positions should not feel sore or uncomfortable to you. If they do, keep practicing them at a level that suits you and you will get better at them over time. So, as the feet well stretched out, let's get into some strength drills. So, what we're gonna work with is the strength and control of our little toesies, first of all. So, what I want you to do, you're gonna test the right side first, and just see, can you press the little toes into the ground, and lift the big toe up 
by itself and see can you hold that position. If you can do that, you're pretty awesome. If not, you may feel like you're trying to bend spoons with your mind, but with practice you will start to get it. Next, you're going to put all the toes down again. You're going to press your big toe into the ground and without rolling your foot to the side, you're going to lift up the little toes by themselves. So little toes are up, big toe is pressed down and I really feel this in the arch of my foot. And hold that. And then we're going to test the other side, see how it feels. So you're going to press the little toes down into the ground, lift the big toe up by itself. And then flip it round, big toe down, lift the little toes up by themselves. And what you'll notice just personal to me because of my back injury, my little toes all just start to curl up and wither away. They can't stay up straight and that's due to a certain nerve that I have impinged. So ideally you want to have your toes up nice and straight. Okay, and then back to the first foot again. So we're going to the right foot, press the little toes into the ground, lift the big one up and just hold it. While you're there, you can do some hip circles. Try and maintain it. And then press the big toe down, lift little toes up. These are little habits that you want to have throughout your day. So if you're just standing in a line waiting for your shopping or whatever, do these while you're, you know, your feet are in your shoes. You don't need to be in your bare feet to be able to do these. But do practice until you get it. Other side, little toes down, big toe up, and hold. Little hip circles. Whoop. It all seems very simple, but a ton of benefits to this stuff. Big toe down, little toes up. And hold. So next thing you want to do is some controlled rotations with the toes, okay? Or with the ankle and the foot. So from here, you can either, you have three options. You can either sit down on the floor or you can hold on to something close to you or you can go for the full on advanced version and you can just try and do it freestanding. So the first thing you're going to do is pick whatever leg you're going to go for. We're going to go right first. Then you're going to curl your toes as much as you can. Then with your big toe, you're going to draw a circle clockwise five times. One two, three, four, and five. Then keep that position, and you're gonna draw anti-clockwise. One, two, three, four, five. And then swap sides. Give your toes a little bit of wiggle if your foot starts to cramp. So, claw as much as you can, and then five times clockwise. One, two, three, four, and five. And then five times anti-clockwise. One, two, three, four, five. You find that your fingers and all kind of start to try and join in to help you out. Next one you're gonna do is pull your toes back as much as you can, and you're gonna draw the circles with the ball of your foot. Okay, so same idea. Lift the leg up, try and balance, so loads of stability on the standing leg if you are doing it freestanding. Clockwise, one, two, three, four, five. And then anti-clockwise, really keep trying to spread the toes here as much as you can. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other side, spread the toes as much as you can. Clockwise, one, two, three, four, five. And then anti-clockwise, one, two, three, four, and five. So, give yourself a little bit of a shake, a few of those rotations just to loosen everything off, both directions. And then we're gonna go into some calf raises with negatives. So, First off, both feet beside each other. Now what you're wanting to do here is rise up and make sure your ankles don't flare out like this, okay? So you're going up and down five times. One, two, three, four, 
and five back down. Make sure you're not just sort of going whoop and flopping yourself back down. Try and control it nice and slowly down each time as if you were just landing like a, one of those superheroes that can fly and it's coming down to do cool stuff. That's what you want to do whenever you're up at that top position. Hold it and then slowly lower yourself down and set yourself down nice and lightly. So if that's easy enough, let's make it a little bit harder. What you're going to do now, we'll start in the left foot. You're going to bring yourself up, shift your weight to the left foot and then lift your right foot up nice and slowly and then lower yourself back down Then swap to the right foot. You're going to lift yourself up, transfer your weight to the right foot, lift the left foot up whoa, and then lower yourself down nice and slowly. And the great thing about these is they never get easier. So lift yourself up, transfer your weight to the left. Lift the right foot up and lower down nice and slowly. Right foot, transfer the weight, lift left foot up and down slowly. Back up, left foot, lift the right foot, lower down nice and slowly. Back up, right foot. Lift the left, lower down, nice and slowly. Left foot, left to right, lower down, nice and slowly. Right foot, transfer the weight, lower down, nice and slowly. If you really struggle with that one, definitely after the video, get a bit more practice into it. Really good for ankle stability. So, Next, we're going to go into a deep split squat position. From here, just get yourself down onto the floor. Use your hands, get yourself in a nice lunge position. And what you're going to do is get your knee as far over your toes as you can, and then tuck the back toes, and just try and take the hands off and hold that position. We'll do that for 15 seconds. If you feel like you're falling all over the place like a mad thing, Absolutely fine. It means you've got more benefits to get from. After that, if you can bring yourself up like this, awesome. If you need to use your hands, absolutely fine. Swap sides, foot down, bring yourself down that lunge, knee as far over as you can get it. Tuck the back toe, and then our 15 seconds. Hold. If you had a couple of dumbbells, you could be doing bicep curls while you're here. Always good things to do. And then nice and slowly, bring yourself back up out of it. And from there, shake the legs off. And then we're gonna do some hops. If you find your ankles feel quite tired, or if you've ever had problems with your ankles, skip this part. But if your ankles are getting stronger and you find these drills a lot easier, then make sure you finish off with some hops. So we're just going to do 30 seconds, hopping up and down. Keep yourself nice and loose. Really nice just to loosen the ring off as well. Who doesn't enjoy hopping? Hopping is like the best thing ever. It's like skipping without the annoying bit. And three, two, one, relax. Next one, we're gonna start bringing the foot, the foot, the feet in and out and side to side. So from here, we're gonna go for another 30 seconds, forwards and backwards. And then swap it up. So you're going in and out. It's like star jumps without the annoying bit. And chillax. So, hopefully you enjoyed all that. Hopefully you're gonna get tons of benefits over time. Just keep practicing the drills. Any you really struggled with, make sure to give them a little bit of extra love um, just at nighttime before bed. And hopefully here is to having happier and healthier and stronger feet.